Hello guys, in this one we're looking at estate cars under five grand. They've all got less than 100,000 miles on the clock and there are some very interesting ones in there, including an extra special one that I'm saving to the end. So make sure you watch the whole video. Keep watching. Just before we get started with this one guys, please give the video a thumbs up and follow me on social media. All that good stuff, where is it? It's over there. Woo. There you go. Follow me on social media. I don't have nearly enough followers on social media and I'd like you to be following. So please go on there. Uh, you can also go on my uh, website, notguru.co.uk and buy me a coffee if you're a nice person. And I'm sure you are. OK, let's get started with um, what is a bit of a classic a BMW 3 Series Touring. So this one's a 2006 model. Uh, three and a half grand it's coming in at, which I think is a fairly decent price. 70,000 miles on the clock, full service history, and it's a two litre petrol. And let's see, running costs 275 quid a year and 37.2 mpg claimed combined. Uh, performance 0 to 60 in 10.6 seconds, so it's not a quick car, but it is quite a big car. I still think this looks like a very very nice car i'm not massively into private plates but i think if that one had one on it people would struggle to pin that down to within about a 10 year radius i think it's still a very good looking car despite despite the fact it's now 15 years old it looks like a very very tidy example this one and the interior looks pretty decent as you can see so let's have a little read up on it. So warranted mileage, which is really good. Full service history, long MOT, alloy wheels, air conditioning, auxiliary port, CD radio, no faults, drives like it first left the showroom. Next MOT due 26th of Feb, full service history. So as always, you want to really dig into that service history and you want to do a, a background check on this car as you do with any of these. Um, I've advertised it on other videos and I'll run an ad again at the end of this one but I've been working with a company called V-Check that, um, that do car history checks, but they take it up a level. You've got so much information, it's unbelievable. So use that and help support the channel. But yeah, with all of these, you really need to dig into the history and you really need to dig into the service history specifically. Okay, but that looks like a very, very good car for three and a half grand. And you could realistically see yourself getting a few years motoring out of that. I always say with a used car, you know, whatever it is, don't go to your full budget on it. Don't push yourself and get to your budget. Always save a few quid for when something goes wrong because it usually is a when and not an if. So if I had a, I'd buy that car if I had a budget of say four grand to buy a used car with, I wouldn't push myself if I could go to say three or three two and just about afford the car. I always like to have a little bit of money left to repair it as and when it goes wrong. Okay, on to the next. This one's a 2011 Skoda Octavia Estate. It's a 1.6 petrol, this one. All these cars are ULEZ, by the way. All the cars I'm looking at in this video are ULEZ compliant, and they've all done under 100,000 miles. Uh, so this one's had tons of service. This, it's got tons of service history. Um, so, I mean, it's listed really badly. They'd have been better off printing this and and taking a picture of it and adding to it but it had timing belt and water pump changed in 2016 at what was it 48,000 miles it had its 10th service at 74,000 miles and inspection at 78,000 miles so it should be as safe a bet as you can get in terms of the history on it as long as it's all kosher and you've checked it all out got a nice big colour screen sat nav system which you don't always expect in a 2011 Skoda Octavia nice big boot I mean they're just such good practical cars and they sold bucket loads of them so you've, you'll find getting parts for them is not a problem and you know if something does go wrong hopefully it shouldn't be too much of a drama for you so I've often spoke of my fondness for the Octavia but the Octavia estate makes more sense than any of them because it's just got so much space in the back and mega practical. And that's just such a good price. Good value for money cars, in my opinion. Running costs on that one, 250 quid tax, 39 MPG. And 12 seconds to 60, so that's pretty slow. You'll see more of these around in diesel spec than petrol. But um, 
you know, don't discount petrol engines because there's in it, there's almost less to go wrong. And if particularly if you do short journeys and stuff, you want a petrol rather than a diesel. If you're giving it a good run every day, then that's what a diesel's meant to do. But if you're doing two miles to Tesco's and back, you know, twice a week, don't buy a diesel because it will have problems in the long run. Right, 2007 Audi A4 Avant. Uh, two litre rest line CVT, so it's the automatic gearbox. Again, it's petrol, this one. Uh, 315 quid tax and 34.9 mpg. And this one's 10.4 seconds to 60. A um, bit of a classic design, aren't they? The old A4s. Uh, that, however, is not classic, that interior. That looks like someone threw up in B&Q. It's not pleasant. I'm not a fan. Although, obviously, you may be. Uh, taste is very individual, isn't it, with these things? But I don't like the interior of that one whatsoever. It's got the Bose sound system, which is very nice. It's got parking sensors, you know, S-lines. It's got a fair amount of gear on it. Two keys, full service history, fully HPI clear, warranted miles, stunning car, 12 months MOT, parking sensors front and rear, that's good. Immaculate condition inside and out, drives like new, fully valeted. So at 3,700 quid, maybe that one makes sense. All right, next one's a 2011 Vauxhall Insignia, and I'm going to show you two Insignias here. They're both three grand. This one is two years newer than the next one. I'm just going to show you something that's an immediate warning sign to me compared to the next one. I think Insignias are good cars. I've had quite a few of them as hire cars and things, and I owned a couple of Vectras prior to Vectra turning into the Insignia. And they were, they were decent cars, to be fair, apart from a couple of engine sensors and things going on them. I never really had any problems, which is rare for my cars. But um, so someone's nicked the Vauxhall badge and under every Vauxhall Insignia badge lies an Opal badge, which is the European branding for Vauxhall. Uh, and that's been nicked as well by the looks of it. So you'd need a new badge on it. Why they wouldn't just buy one for a tenner or something and stick it on. If you haven't even bothered to do sort of a 10 quid repair or a 20 quid repair, what, what else haven't you bothered to do? But the car looks tidy enough, apart from all the filth there. The thing that rings alarm bells with me is all the good things they're saying here. <laughs> Does that make any sense? Right, great condition for age and mileage. Age and mileage, well, it's, it's 10 years old, this car. It's not that old. Lovely interior. Everything works as it should. Drives great. No knocks or bangs. Pulls really well in all gears. First to see will buy. Right, it could be that all that's true and it could be that that's their sales pitch and that's it they're saying oh it's really really good it drives really well it pulls well in all gears to me that says oh and it's got three keys why would you have three keys that's an odd one but to me when they make such a massive point about the fact that there aren't any knocks and bangs and it pulls well in all gears i'm reading that as there are a few knocks and bangs and it doesn't pull very well in all gears you know someone's making a point of the fact it drives well and that seems to be the only sales pitch of all the things that are not wrong with it. Maybe I'm an idiot. I'm a bit of a, a bloodhound for these things. Right, tax, 210 quid a year, combined MPG 36.2. These engines actually uh, return really decent fuel economy on a run. They're not so good around town, but on a run, it really goes up quite a lot. 11.6 to 60, so it's quite slow. The 2 litre version of that, 2 litre petrol, uh, from experience, used to do about 30 around town and you get a good 50, 55 on a, on a long motorway run. So it's really quite impressive, the difference. Right, so here's the other insignia. So this is a 2009 model, same engine, same colour, um, same price, pretty much. This one says, drives lovely, very reliable, reluctant sale, just had new cam belt and water pump, so that's great, because that's a big job to do. It's an expensive job. Four new tyres, again, fantastic, four new tyres, and a new exhaust. Brilliant. Uh, the only thing with this one is it doesn't mention service history, so you would want to make sure it's got all that. But otherwise, if it's got if it's got service history, and it's just had new cam belt, new water pump, four new tyres, and the new exhaust, they're the main things that are going to cost you reasonable money on a car. Uh, I know gearbox and engine and stuff like that are going to cost you mega bucks, but they're like your standard. You, if the cam belt hasn't been done, your engine's going to potentially seize. 
Water pump is always done at the same time as a cam belt because it makes no sense not to. Four new tyres, that could be 100 quid a corner. New exhaust, I mean, you know, exhaust is going to cost you a couple hundred quid. Tyres and exhaust go on cars all the time and give you unexpected bills, so that's good. You do need to make sure it's got the service history, though. 2007 Volvo V50, because you can't talk about estate cars and not mention a Volvo, can you? It would be criminal. And I think, again, much like that BMW, this is a really good-looking car and doesn't look its age. 2007 model. Interior looks okay. The seats are a bit cracked and baggy, but you could actually... Uh, with a little bit of care and elbow grease, you could get those seats looking nice again for not too much money. Obviously, that stereo head unit's look, shown its age, and this um, plastic wood trim may not be to everyone's like. So it's just under five grand. This one, um, eighty thousand miles. Again, it's ULES compliant as they all are. Long MOT and full uh, long MOT and full service history. Ready to drive. Blah blah blah. Uh, let's have a look. 7.8 seconds to 60, which is brilliant, isn't it? By far the quickest one we've seen so far in this selection. And I'm going to look at the same thing again. Uh, running cost, 340 quid a year tax, 33 MPG. That's going to be lower than that in reality. So you, it's not going to be a cheap car to run, but it's 2.4 litre petrol. Right, 2011 Hyundai i30. 1.6 Comfort. This is one of those cars that nobody ever thinks of. No one sits there thinking, right, I need to buy an estate car. I know, a Hyundai i30. And just don't. There are often good cars that get overlooked just because they're not a Mondeo or an Astra or something like that that everyone suddenly thinks about. And, you know, Hyundai make good cars. They put long warranties on their stuff, which means they've got faith in it. Faith in the fact that it's been well built. And... This is a nice car and it's got plenty of room. It's got a decent sized boot on that. And, you know, it's not going to blow anyone's skirt up in terms of styling or anything, but it's not a bad looking car. Could do a lot worse than that. We've done a full service, air con service, lady owner for the last nine years, great condition throughout the new MOT and 12 months warranty. Last serviced on 1st of September 21 at 37,000 miles, part service history. So it sounds like that one lady owner's had it for a long time but didn't bother getting it serviced too often. And if it's gone nine years without a service, oof. but it may be she was doing it every 10,000 miles, which happened to be every three years or something. So just have a, you, you'd want to have a good look into that. But um, otherwise, it seemed okay. 11 seconds to 60, 210 quid a year tax, 45 MPG. Next one's 2011 Toyota Aventis, and it's the 1.8 TR, and it's petrol. Uh, so Toyota, obviously famed for their reliability and the fact that cars go on forever, not necessarily going to be the most engaging or sporty drive, but, you know, huge space, massively practical. Look at that boot, it's ginormous, and it's just not going to let you down. Got sat-nav, which is good. Reversing camera, so it's a very good spec this one for a 2011. Service history, MOT, March 22, sat now, reverse camera, aux port, USB port, privacy glass, air con, alloy wheels, blah, blah, blah. So all it says is service history, so you need to dig into that and find out what that service history is and how many years it goes back, when the last one was, if it's had time and chains or belts dealt with, all that kind of good stuff. 9.7 seconds to 60, uh, 42.8 mpg. Right, Skoda Superb, 2011, 93,900 miles. So this is the old shape Superb, which, you know, there are better looking cars, but there are certainly worse ones. Again, someone's nicked the Skoda badge or it's fallen off and then replaced it. How difficult is that, really? You can see there's some damage there on the back of the bumper as well. And a little bit there by the looks of things. And is that wing the same colour as the door? It could well be, but you'd want to check that out. Right, massive, massive boot on these and plenty of passenger space. And a really nice cabin as well. Look at the legroom there. 
That's ridiculous how much leg room there is in that car. So I'm not convinced that this one's necessarily going to be the best example, but that's definitely a car you should be thinking about if you want a big estate car, because they don't come that much bigger, and they've got really nice cabin, quite luxurious. Uh, some of the top spec ones, like the Lauren and Clement ones, have got full granddad spec interior, complete with, you know, shiny plastic wood trim and all that sort of stuff. Shop around and you can find a nice one, but they, they you know, they're very, very good cars. Right, another Volvo, the V70, which is a very similar story to that, that V50 in fairness. Uh, same year, same engine, but they're just bigger. They're ginormous. So, do you remember the police used to use these on the, for their motorway cars quite often? They're just big tanks of cars with absolutely epically ginormous boots. Look at that. It is huge. Unfortunately, I can't pop these pictures out. Uh, it's not been very well listed, this one, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. But if you like the Volvos and you, you're looking for a bigger one, the V70 is the one to go for in this sort of price range. Right, this one had to come on because it's an absolute classic. Check this out. Look at that interior. Seven seats as well. There's two seats there popped up in the boot. And if you have those down, that boot is ginormous. Look at that. This looks like a proper, honest old car to me. I don't know. I think this thing's uber cool. Like, really super cool. 1993 Mercedes-Benz 220 TE seven seat. Right, so the previous owner of this car is no longer able to drive and that's the reason they're selling it. And I'd imagine they've had this since God was a boy. You can just see that this has, you know, been someone's pride and joy and it probably, probably did three miles a week at about 12 miles an hour. Um, not, not that I want to um, throw any stereotypes around or anything like that. It's only done 74,000 miles and I bet it's got a ton of service history. Our vendor, an elderly lady, purchased the car in 1996, and it's only the second owner has kept the car ever since. During her tenure, the car's been garaged when not driven. It's been well-maintained, as demonstrated by a comprehensive service history from Mercedes-Benz main dealers. This car also benefits from an MOT until Feb 2022. She's no longer able to drive the car. She needs a new keeper for this lovely example. Guide price four to six thousand. So, uh, sounds like they're going to possibly take some bids on there, but it might be the sort of thing where, that you could get at a decent price if you you got in with a, a decent cash offer on it. But yeah, I mean that would need to be properly inspected for sure. But you could find yourself a little bargain with something like that. It's also the kind of car that might go up in value in the not too distant future, because um, particularly if it is a good example and it's got all that service history and the service history checks out and it hasn't had accidents and stuff, you know, that that's the kind of car that could be serious money in 10 years time. You never know. Right, 2009 Mazda 6, 12 months MOT, 2.2 diesel sport. I, I put this one on here because again, I think it's a bit of an overlooked car sometimes. Mazda 6, always a brilliant driver's car and um, nice big boot on these as well. And I think they often get overlooked for Mondeos and stuff. And they should always be part of the conversation, in my opinion. Uh, this one just says service history. So not much else than that, unfortunately. I wish more people would start taking pictures of the service history and putting it in with the car photos. Because um, it would save a lot of messing about. And really, it's a great selling feature if it's got it. So why not show it? Uh, 72,000 miles on that one as well. So, yeah, nice looking car. Right, next one's a Datsia Logan. Yes, a Datsia Logan. Once again, I wouldn't touch one of these, but maybe it makes sense to you. It's a two, it's 2017 car, and that's mental, isn't it? 2017 car, and it's four grand. Uh, it's done 73,000 miles in those four years, but um, it's four grand. I mean, it's the design equivalent of you know dog turd in the sole of your shoe really isn't it but some people like them i guess uh the other thing is it's a one liter engine with 75 horsepower and that's quite a big car if you're driving that thing around you know fully laden with stuff in the boot that little engine's working incredibly hard isn't it 
I don't think there'll be too many of these in that guise that, that get past 10 years old, in fairness. But if you need something to run you around for a couple of years, maybe it'll do the job. Uh, I just thought I'd mention it just because it's so cheap for such a new car. But on this occasion, maybe you get what you pay for. Right, last but by no means least, this is an interesting one. This is a very interesting one. So it's a Ford Mondeo and it's a 3 litre ST220. Now these things are becoming rarer than hen's teeth, I think. And particularly nice examples that haven't been got at. There's a strong argument that these are going to be worth serious money in years to come. You know, this might be the new Sierra Cosworth in however many years or... These cars that are now going across the block for proper money, this could be one of them one day. It's done 90,000 miles. And I'm not sure how modified it's been. Or if at all. But 3 litre V6. Massive boot as well. I mean, they are like super practical as well, but oh my God, do these things shift. I mean, it looks like a very, very good example. Right, here's the good bit. Full service history, lots of it forward. Sounds, feels, performs great. Starts and drives superbly, high spec. Heated full leather, 18 inch alloys. Surely an appreciating and rare desirable Ford. Uh, Quentin Wilson tipped last week that these will appreciate in value. Okay, no offers, thank you. By appointment only close Sundays. You could own that car for a few years and have it as your daily driver and get some enjoyment from it. And it is epically practical as well. You know, it's got that ginormous boot and plenty of cabin space. And then maybe you could stick it away or something, you know, keep it looked after and run it once in a blue moon. You know, maybe you can do that and um, make a few quid on it in years to come. Take it to car shows or whatever. It won't be too long, I don't think, before that's worth some proper money. So look at the size of the calipers on the front there. They're gi gigantic. Are they standard on that? Okay, that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed that video. I'm going to play an ad now for uh, VCheck, which is the car history check service of choice for me. Uh, there is a link to it in the pinned comments and in the video description. Please use that for your car history checks and use my link. It helps support the channel. The checks start from about £1.60 each. And I, I mean, I get next to nothing if you use it, but if enough people do it, it all mounts up, doesn't it? And helps support the channel. It helps my ridiculous habit of investing in equipment that probably my YouTube channel will never be able to afford to pay for. So uh, thanks very much, guys. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time. I've done a deal with VCheck, who I think are one of the premier providers of online car history checks. As you can see here on this quick sample report, you can check the registered VIN number against the one that's actually on the vehicle. You can see the current MOT and road tax status. Has the car ever been stolen? Is there outstanding finance? Has it been an insurance write-off? If so, what kind? If it has been, can you see photos of the car before the damage was repaired? You know, you might see this car now and it's in perfect condition, but does seeing these images of it at the time of the accident make you change your mind possibly? Has it been a taxi? Number of previous keepers and the dates for those, number plate changes, mileage records. This is great because you can see any discrepancies in the mileage in a really easy to follow way. So if it done 50,000 one year, 40 the next, you know there's a problem. You've also got the MOT history checks all built into this one single report and it'll give you a basic car valuation. The bundles start from £1.60 a check, but I would all strongly recommend you go for the full check. Now I've done a deal with VCheck. They do pay me if you use my link. So please do that because it helps support the channel. And I have to tell you that this is a completely unbiased recommendation. You should never buy a used car without running these kind of checks and this is a fantastic one please use the link in the video description and help support the channel thanks